So this is pretty cool. This is like a five minute video. So for those that don't know, my background is injection molding. Before I went into the whole YouTubing ad additive manufacturing thing, I worked in a plastic injection molding shop building molds. Now I wasn't an engineer, I didn't design the molds. I was the wrench monkey on the floor who put the molds together, took them apart and did testing and you know repairs and actual assembly of the molds and all that jazz. That is my background. I did that for seven years, skill trade, mostly automotive though. So it's pretty cool to see the other use cases of the technology and you know, considering we're building some gunpla here and you know, I just finished building a six foot tall, 85 pound Gundam behind me. Let's see how Bandai does it for their actual gunpla kits. Let's, let's give it a watch. So there's the CAD of it. Like as somebody who can't CAD themselves out of a wet cardboard box, the people that do this are insane. Also, I love their uniforms. They <laughs> They're the Gundam uniforms. They're like the Bandai Hobby Center. That's pretty cool. So you can see here, they're laying out the sprues. So I'm assuming how it works. They probably design the model first and then they figure out, okay, these are all the individual parts. Now we need to figure out how to design the actual sprues uh, for it and all the different colors and everything. So you can see them dragging over the models. These are the molds themselves. These are tiny molds, at least compared to what I'm used to. And you can see, so we have there's the, uh, the RX-78 II Beam Saber Chopsticks, Gundam Age One Normal, uh, Master Grade, Sazabi, Verka. So I'm assuming each one of these is also maybe a couple sprues. I'm assuming each one of these isn't a complete Gundam kit. So this guy's a handman, or at least that's what we call it, they're, they're polishers, they're finishers. They make it all nice and shiny. So you would have your CNC machines, your EDM machines, they would do all the machining, but then these folks would have to come in and basically when you machine everything and whatnot, you would leave a little bit of stock. You would leave a couple thou of stock on pretty much all surfaces because folks would go in and start polishing and emmering and filing and basically doing everything they need to to make the parts shiny so that when you go to injection mold your parts the parts come out clean and these parts because they come right out and they're not meant to be painted or anything you have to get that metal to a certain surface finish and there's different grades of surface finish and i'm assuming the higher grade the kit the more work they put into it but they you know from the kits i've built it seems like they put in a lot of work i don't know if this is like an assembly line location where they're like building it or if this is more like a maintenance and updating section but this might be like the actual workflow because you don't need a lot of people to do this like only one person can work on something this small at a time so these are all the different parts kits and different molds so these are these are small molds these molds are a couple hundred pounds uh, p20 tool steel you'll probably see a lot of they look like they're single drop molds as well. So they probably don't have a hot runner system in it. Yeah, they don't have a hot runner system in it. You can see um, the little spigots there, that's for the cooling. So you hook water up to it to, you're not so much cooling the mold, like you are you are cooling the mold, but you run water through the mold to kind of keep the mold at consistent temperature. Cause once you start running plastic through it, certain areas are gonna start to heat up. So the water kind of keep it at a stable temperature as well. So he's clamping it into the mold there and he's gonna run some parts. So yep, you just you just clamp them to the plantum. You just line it up with the, the, the drop and then you just clamp it to the plantum. Two halves of the mold, you un make sure you undo the locks that hold the two halves together. <laughs> and then you just open the mold. So you can see the barrel there moving in to engage with the mold itself. There's a part. So normally you would run a couple parts first to make sure everything's flowing right. You don't want to short shot it, which is not inject enough plastic. You don't want to overshoot it by injecting too much plastic. There's like a whole dialing in. And then once you figure it out, you just kind of use the same procedure for every mold. So this is pretty cool. These are all the molds or these are all the uh, injection molding machines. And it looks like they store the molds underneath the walkway. It, it literally looks like they're in, they store the molds underneath the walkway. Um, that is pretty clever. 
Because you, you want to hang on to these for a while. And you want to, you know, keep easy access to them. But you don't want to have to, like, go far to get them. So that's actually pretty clever. And also, you got to think, most of this place is probably raised anyways, because you have a bunch of water, uh, electrical. Th there's, like, a, a lot of stuff being run everywhere. So putting it underground is actually kind of clever as well. So you can see here, shoots the parts. The arm grabs it out. When the mold opens, you have um, the ejection system with a bunch of pins and whatnot, pushes the part out. You can see the runner is getting chopped off there and dropped in a bin for recycling. So you can see this is all essentially lights out manufacturing. Okay, so these machines are probably all running lights out. There probably is some operators either assigned to probably not each individual machine, but like groups of machines that check on them. There's sensors in place to make sure everything's running. But this, this is full on lights out production. Like you, you can see people working around, but nobody's really like watching the machines as they work. So there's all your different plastic. So this is, this is resin. This is what your plastic comes with, comes like when you buy bulk plastic. So for those of us here in good old additive manufacturing land, you're used to seeing it in filament. Most filament manufacturers don't make their own plastic. They buy the bulk resin like this, and then they run it through an extruding machine that turns it into filament. So a lot of polystyrene and a lot of ABS. And then they do have, um, I, don't, I don't know if it's like a neoprene for the rubbery stuff. Um, so you gotta, dry the, you gotta dry the resin and then it usually feeds directly from the dryer right into the machines. And then these look like storage. You can see the colorant and everything there. All the different machines. So this, it looks like a lot of automating. So it's probably, you know, when you, when you buy the kits, you, they come in a box with like a, a bunch of different sprues, all different colors. So you're running them one batch at a time. So you're loading, you know, you load it in. One machine is just making this sprue constantly, okay? And it might not be making all the parts for the entire Gundam at once. They might be making this on one machine today, and then tomorrow they're making this on the next, that same machine. Or they could have multiple machines making multiple different sprues at the same time. Or if it's a big thing, you know, they're launching a big kit, they know it's going to be high demand. They could have multiple machines running the same thing if they have multiple molds of it. It's all like a supply and demand type thing. It's not like they're, you know, the part comes out, it goes right in the box. The part comes out and goes in some sort of storage sorting system, which I'm assuming that's what these bins are. Everything's probably tagged and labeled and electronically tracked and everything. Um, so this way, when they go to, you know, put the kits together, they go out, they grab the different bins, and it's like one from this bin, one from this bin, one from this bin, throw them in the box, sell it. And then also, you're probably keeping these molds for years. Yeah, is it automated? Yeah, it's probably all automated. So it's like an Amazon warehouse, it's probably all automated. The center for craftsmanship. Um, I've dabbled in handworking, like polishing molds and whatnot. I, I you know, crash course on it because I had to do it occasionally when I worked at the mold shop. Those folks that do that, they got a lot of patience. Taking taking machined metal of all kinds of random shapes. Because when you look at these kits, when you look at like, grab a random sprue here. By grab a random sprue, grab one that looks cool. Like looking at how detailed these parts are, just imagine somebody had to go in here with emery paper, with, with lapping compound, with brushes, with files, with, with hand tools, and polish up every single part you see here to get it so that when the part comes out of the mold, you're not seeing the machining marks, everything's to size, everything looks like this, essentially. And then you run these parts hundreds of thousands of times, and then occasionally you gotta do a tune-up, and uh, yeah, so it's it's a lot more involved than additive manufacturing. There's a lot more prep time, but the, the advantage of injection molding is once you have your mold made and everything set, that mold goes in a machine and it pumps out a sprue of parts every 30 seconds. Um, a mold for a front fascia for a car, your bumper on a car, that weighs like a dozen pounds of ABS plastic. That mold is shooting out a front fascia every 90 seconds, repeatedly, all day, every day. You're not seeing that scale with additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing has the advantage when you're you're just starting and you're like, oh shoot, we need a, you know, hey, 
we need to prototype this part. This is a prototype uh, or very low production. We need a bunch of them right now. We don't have time to spin up a tool. We don't want to spend the money to spin up a tool. But if somebody comes to you and you're like, yeah, I need a million of these things by the end of the year, well, you're probably going to build a mold for it. So it's economies of scale. You are seeing more additive manufacturing start to creep up into the lower production numbers of, of injection molding. But for the most part, injection molding, it's got a very firm grip because the big advantage of injection molding, when the parts come out of the mold, they go into the box and they go right to the customer or they go and get painted. With additive manufacturing, you got layer lines. You, you don't, you're not getting the same quality of part. You're not getting the same quality of part or material properties and whatnot. So that was a cool little, cool little deep dive there. Uh, about the, the Gundam Gunpla factory there. So that was fun. Cheers.